Hello everyone in CardioMind's channel and as I promised you that I'm going to present spin-off videos related to the precautions of prescribing the essential heart failure medications and we are starting today with prescribing ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. As we mentioned before that there is a separate reference called the supplementary data which contains specific details related to the clinical trials and related to the precautions of prescribing heart failure medications. And we need to emphasize that these recommendations represent expert opinion based on the relevant clinical trials and the clinical experience. In each of these panel videos we are going to ask why do we prescribe this medication, in whom and when do we prescribe it, which preparation and what dose, where do we prescribe it, how to use it, some of the problems that we face during prescribing these medications and how to solve them and what is the advice we give to the patient. We remember from the last video that ACE inhibitor has a class 1 recommendations in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death, whereas angiotensin receptor blocker is to be prescribed in those who are unable to tolerate an ACE inhibitor or an ARNI. So answering the first question, why do we prescribe them? To improve symptoms and exercise capacity, to reduce risk of heart failure hospitalization, and to increase survival rate. The second question, in whom and when do we prescribe it? The indications here, we are speaking about patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Whereas the contraindications represent history of angioedema because we know, of course, that ACE inhibitor increases the level of bradykinine which may result in angioedema in some predisposed patients. And we need to emphasize that the safety of angiotensin receptor blocker in those patients is still uncertain. Patients with documented bilateral renal artery stenosis, pregnancy or possibility of pregnancy because they are contraindicated in pregnancy and so she should not be prescribed in those who are at child bearing periods and known allergic reaction or other adverse reaction to ACE or angiotensin receptor blockers. There are some situations in which we need to be cautious, for example, patients with significant hyperkalemia, patients with significant renal dysfunction like creatinine more than 2.5 mg per deciliter or estimated GFR less than 30, and those with symptomatic or severe asymptomatic hypotension with systolic blood pressure less than 90. Also, there are some drug interactions that we need to be cautious about, like potassium supplements or potassium spurring diuretics, which increase the risk of hyperkalemia. Mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, which is an essential medication to be prescribed with ACE, but the concomitant prescription may increase the risk of hyperkalemia, that's why we need to be cautious about that. Renin inhibitors, which is of course not approved in heart failure, and if they are wrongly prescribed at the time, it will result in significant hyperkalemia and renal dysfunction, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and the prescription of the antibiotic trimethoprim or sulfamisoxazole, which is not preferred with ACE or ARBs, and don't forget the low salt substitutes which may be prescribed for heart failure patients to reduce salt retention, but sometimes the high potassium content increases the risk of hyperkalemia. If we ask ourselves which medication and what is the dose, we remember this table from the last video giving details about the different ACE inhibitors like Captoprel, Inalapril, and Ramipril with their starting and target doses, and the different angiotensin receptor blockers like Candisartan, Valsartan, and Losartan with also their starting and target doses. We mean by this question of where, what is the suitable setting to prescribe ACE or ARP? We mean in stable heart failure patients like in outpatient setting or sometimes in patients hospitalized with worsening heart failure but after stabilizing the patient, relieving congestion and if possible trying to restoring a volemic state before discharge. And remember that in NEHA class 4 patients with severe heart failure and those with current or recent exacerbation, they should be referred for a specialist advice to decide whether to prescribe them or to wait. Then moving to how to use them or what are the precautions during prescribing ACE inhibitors. First of all, you need to have a baseline renal function and electrolytes including one, creatinine, sodium and potassium. We need to start usually with a low dose to avoid any side effects or complication and then double the dose after at least two week intervals in the outpatient setting. Sometimes we may have rapid dose up titration 
if it is performed in a hospitalized patient as we are speaking about in patient setting with close monitoring and aim for the target dose as much as you can or the highest tolerated dose according to the patient symptoms and blood pressure and remember that some ACE or ARP is of course better than no ACE inhibitor at all. Don't forget to recheck kidney function including sodium and potassium one to two weeks after initiating the dose and also one to two weeks after any dose titration. Monitor kidney function every four months and specialist advice should be sold before discontinuing ACE or ARB if rarely necessary in order to decide what is the benefit versus risk. And the last advice that in some countries there is a specialist heart failure nurse which may help the patient in education, follow up, how to biochemical monitor the effect of the medication and dose up titration. Let's move to some of the problems that we may face during the process of prescription. Starting with asymptomatic low blood pressure, which sometimes the patient is concerned about. In this case, this does not require any change in therapy. You need to reassure the patient, provided that he is asymptomatic and is clinically perfused. But what about symptomatic? hypotension. In this case, dizziness is common and it often improves with time, so you need to reassure your patient. But if he is still symptomatic, in this case you need to reduce the dose or even stop concomitant nitrates. You can stop calcium channel blockers like for example amlodipine because we know that non-DHP calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in case of reduced ejection fraction and you can stop other vasodilators which may contribute to hypotension. If there are no signs or symptoms of congestion, in this case, we can consider reducing the diuretic dose to help increasing the blood pressure. This means that we try to do as much as we can to reduce or stop any other medications that affect the blood pressure before deciding to stop ACE inhibitor or ARP. Cough is the most common side effect of ACE inhibitor and usually it is dry cough due to increased bradykinine level. But remember that it can be also a symptom of pulmonary edema or lung disease. So they need to be excluded before jumping to a diagnosis of ACE inhibitor induced cough. In most of the cases, it does not require treatment discontinuation. But if it is irritating cough, like for example, awakening the patient from sleep and it is proved to be due to ACE inhibition, for example, it stop after stopping the ACE inhibitor and it recur after rechallenge. In this case, we can replace the ACE inhibitor with an angiotensin receptor blocker, but you need to tell the patient that it may take slightly longer time for the cough to resolve, about four to six weeks or sometimes longer. Worsening kidney function and hyperkalemia is one of the most serious complications that we may face with ACE inhibitors or ARPs, sometimes an increase in creatinine up to 50% above baseline or increase up to 3 mg per deciliter or increasing the potassium to less than 5.5 millimole is acceptable and so in this case you can continue the ACE or ARP without reducing the dose or stopping them. But if there is increasing creatinine up to 100% above baseline, we are speaking about doubling of the level or increase creatinine to more than 3.5 or increase potassium to more than 5.5. In this case, we need to stop the ACE or the ARP and seek specialist advice. But in the gray zone in which there is increasing creatinine of 50 to 100% above baseline or increase to a value between 3 to less than 3.5 milligram per deciliter. In this case, we can consider stopping concomitant nephrotoxic medication like nonsteroidal, consider stopping potassium spurring diuretics, reduce the dose of diuretics because sometimes it is a pre-renal failure state if there are no signs of congestion and if still there is worsening kidney function, we can halve the dose and recheck kidney function within one to two weeks. So the conclusion in this situation is that the blood chemistry including bun, creatinine, sodium and potassium should be monitored frequently and serially in patients taking ACE or ARBs until potassium and creatinine have been stabilized. In this case, we can reduce the frequency of monitoring. And finally, with the advice that we need to give to the patient personally, 
we need to explain to him or to her the expected benefits so he get convinced that he need to take this medication we need to tell the patient that the symptoms may take about few weeks to few months to improve we need to advise the patient to report any principal adverse effect like dizziness lightheadedness or cough and advise the patient to avoid non-steroidal not prescribed by a physician or salt substitutes because sometimes they are high in potassium content so increasing the risk of worsening kidney function and hyperkalemia so our take home messages today from this short span of video that monitoring kidney function is an ongoing cornerstone throughout the pathway of prescribing ACE and ARBs, not just the baseline kidney function. And before deciding to stop it, please assess the magnitude of its benefit versus its risk to decide whether to continue or in some conditions stop for the sake of the patient. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait in the next video for prescribing Arnie.